Good afternoon, everyone. Ed Oswald with Echo Top Storm Chasers and your Thursday afternoon update on Hurricane Matthew. Matthew has strengthened quickly overnight and is now a category for a hurricane with 140 mile per hour winds. The center of circulation itself is passing to the west of Nassau in the Bahamas. And really, if you're on the Florida coast, it's time to leave. You may have less than 6 to 12 hours at this point to get out, depending on where you're at along the coast. Matthew will approach the Florida coast later tonight and be near, if not over, the central Florida coast around sunrise on Friday. Looking here at the warnings, uh, you can see the added warnings basically for the entire east coast of Florida all of coastal Georgia and portions of the South Carolina coast. Even north of that up into southeastern North Carolina, you're going to want to watch that closely um, over the next couple of hours. We may see some additional warnings issued even up into this area as well in South Carolina and the southeastern North Carolina coast. Right now, we're looking here at the prototype storm surge warning, basically the same area as those hurricane warnings, but do notice the surge warning an effect for some of these tidally affected inland streams and creeks. So if you're in an area prone to storm surge flooding, even a little bit inland, make preparations now or better get follow any mand mandatory evacuation orders. Taking a look here at the visible satellite loop, what we're seeing is the storm itself made its way past Nassau. Nassau is here and it will now continue to move into the northern Bahamas and towards the Florida coast. What I really like to show you is the rainbow infrared and what you can see is these colder cloud tops have now completely circularly around that center of circulation that we saw before it was really disrupted here up to the north and west it still is but the core of the storm looks very very healthy and that is why we saw that rapid strengthening especially this morning and which brought it back to category four status we're going to take a look here at the radar loop of the southeastern u.s you can see all along the coast here showers and thunderstorms in some of these you're seeing some gusty winds up to 30 35 even 40 miles per hour even here in the southeastern part of the Florida, these have become a lot more vigorous. We're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of severe uh, storms developing. Um, you need to also be watching along the coast here for some to spin up tornadoes. Uh, with any land falling hurricane, we always get the possibility for tornadoes. And that's something that we're definitely going to see a higher risk of, especially as we move into Thursday night and overnight into Friday. What you can see here is the center of the storm just here on the edge of that. Can't see the eye yet, but over the next couple hours, we'll definitely be able to see that quite nicely on the radar. Looking here at the GFS from uh, 7 a.m. this morning, you can see down there in the Bahamas, that is Matthew itself. But watch the track here as we move it here into tonight by around 1 a.m., on Friday, it's already on on or near the coast of uh, Florida. Actually, this puts it inland around, I would say, 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning on Friday. And you can see that's almost over basically Cape Canaveral. And the Cape Canaveral actually sticks out a little bit. And I think that's possibly a good favored spot for an actual landfall if it happens. Um, but as you move along, the GFS here really has one of the worst case scenarios for what could happen here. You can see it really hugs the coast and it's actually moving just inland. You know, a lot of people going to be affected. That's even moving up into Georgia, it's still hugging the coast. I mean, you're going to Charleston. There's such a large area that's gonna have this onshore fetch, which causes the stir uh, surge and be on the worst side of the storm all along the coast because it's basically following the, the curve of the southeastern coast itself. We'll just let this play out here until until the end. And you can see it starts to move to the east after that. But then they actually come across Florida as maybe a weak tropical storm um, and bring more rain there at the end. And you can see here as we stop the loop, that's still Nicole. And those two storms are actually doing a dance around each other. And combined with the high pressure system that we have built up here, that's what's causing the, the storms to almost pinwheel around each other. We see that a lot. It happened in, with, with low pressure systems. It's called the Fujiwara effect. Definitely something you want to look up. I, I won't explain it here, but I would, I would invite you to actually do a little bit of uh, research on your own. It's kind of an interesting uh, topic. Uh, here, we're going to take a look at the latest tracks as of this morning. One thing that is nice 
that I'm seeing here is a lot of these tracks are keeping it most for the most part off the coast. But again, as I was talking about, the Cape Canaveral area sticks out further than the rest of the coast. So I think they have the highest likelihood of seeing some kind of landfall from this storm. Um, just to remind you guys, we do have that website, www.echotopchasers.com slash Matthew, Facebook, www.facebook.com slash echotopchasers. Uh, we are sending a chaser down, hopefully, into the Myrtle Beach, South Carolina area. We're not headed all the way down to Florida, simply can't get there in time, and it's for safety reasons as well. Uh, but we'll hope to have some more information there for you later tonight on when we expect them to be there. But that, those effects up in that area, up in uh, the Savannah, Charleston, even Myrtle Beach area won't be until this weekend, uh, sometime probably on Saturday or so. Again, see us online, www.echotopchasers.com slash Matthew, and we'll have a video for you later tonight. So until next time, I'm Ed Oswald, and I'll talk to you again soon.